Of course. <laughs> and then after Fox and Drew Huffman, who was our MC last year, he did an awesome job at our conference. And so um, you can take advantage of that as well. Drew is the it's man. Connected. Yeah, right. <laughs> he is the man. He just blows me away by what he can do. It's just amazing. <laughs> Agreed. Agreed. Oh, All right, everyone. So um, we have a few minutes. So before we get started, a uh, couple other announcements. We are also booking for uh, my TV show. So we have the Tanya Hoffman's fabulous TV show, which Fox, you need to be on again. Yes, I do need to be on yes. again. Exactly. So we've got that. Uh, obviously, it's video and interview style. And then we also have two video series this year, two new ones. And one of them is Your Story, because everyone loves to hear about people's stories. The other one is um, a opportunity to get your expertise out there. So it's called Transformational Tips. So you have a chance to give a two, three minute tip, lead generate at the end, um, and then I spread out each one of those tips per month. So it just keeps you know, hitting people over and over and over again um, so that they can take advantage of that. So definitely want to get connected and get involved with that one. All righty. We still got a couple minutes. Because I'm, getting, I'm talking too fast or something. <laughs> That's all right. It's a long day for you. Long day. I know, right? <laughs> and then I forget, you know, what did I already say? Because I've said things over and over again. <laughs> I don't know how you do it. You have to really, you can't script it, but yeah, it's, I can't imagine how tired you might be right now. <laughs> yeah, and today I have a short summit, so but the long one. Ooh, um, yeah. Do you go with co coffee, tea? How do you, how do you get, how do you navigate through it? Um, well, you know, it's fun to, to listen to everybody. Um, of course. So that's, you know, part of that. But yeah, you know, it's just you just do it, right? That's yeah. what part of the most things in our life is it's just when you really love what you do, it's really not work. You know, you may be tired at the end of the day, but that just means you're gonna have a good night's sleep. <laughs> that's true. That's true. That's a, that's a great way of looking at it. Right. The more tired I am, the better I'll sleep. Exactly. And you sound a little distant. I do. I move I guess I moved back. Yeah. That's me. Want me to move closer here? Does that sound any better? Oh, much better. Okay. Because when I laugh, <laughs> when I laugh, I fall backwards. So when I fell backwards, <laughs> I got further away from the microphone. Nice. <laughs> it's all about tweaking, right? <laughs> yes. Yes. We've had a few of those in our uh, our time right. together. All right. All right. Are you ready to get going? I am. Yes. All righty. Just. As usual, you know how this goes. Just wind up about five minutes still. Sound good? You got it. All right. Hold on. Let me go introduce you. Welcome to Fall in Love with Virtual Summit, brought to you today by the Public Speakers Association. I'm so excited to introduce to you one of the top poets in the world, <laughs> an amazing speaker, Mr. Fox Meyer. Fox, will you take it from here? Thank you so much, as always, Tanya. It's always great to be on these PSA virtual summits. And today, fall in love with nature. So I'll give you nine ways we can go outside, look for something, and just fall in love with nature and rejuvenate yourself. And many of these poems are from my book, Letter Kindling, Igniting, Inspiring, and Evoking the Fire Within. Good afternoon. I am Fox Byer, and like Tanya said, among a few things, I am a poet. And we'll begin with a poem uh, I've named Turn Off the Dark. Here on the East Coast, it's November, and we, we clocks, we, 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 uh, we fall back, and we lose an hour during the day of, of sunlight, basically. And it's just my reflection of that time. So I'll begin this way with the poem Turn Off the Dark. A 7 a.m. sunrise, such a brilliant disguise for the soon set to occur here at Eastern Standard Time. It seems we race, race against a clock, so we won't be shocked, shocked by the imminent absence of light. 
for soon it will be tonight. Midday does not delay. It's just a token way to say that we are down the road in stage three decay. Plants, trees, and flowers they weep, shadows cast and begin to creep over all creations, a nebulous asphyxiation. Sundown, stopping point, make your mark. Would it not be easier to just turn off the dark? So again, that's the poem, Turn Off the Dark. It's my, I guess my way of saying, we need a little bit more sunlight here on the East Coast, just in kind of a joking manner. Again, this is Fox 5, PSA Virtual Summit, trying to get you to fall in love with nature, with some poems from my book, Letter Kindling. The next poem I'll recite to you all today is a reflection of uh, one of my favorite TV shows, Le Alaska, Alaska frontier and a lot of what I've watched on there are cattle drives and how um, how difficult they can be but how great it is to be outside and be, be one with nature and the animals within nature and this poem is called a sharp knife and a pissed off cow there are many men I hold in great regard ho humming their tasks to me so hard I think of the great range rider. To me, he's the prototype, a true life fighter. His cattle are his men, and his land he defends from animals, weather, and the like. Every day, a 15-round knockout fight. Up every day at five. Him and his cattle out for the drive. He does what he should. He labels his goods. With his lasso, he ropes his steer and labels its right ear. He does it, I don't know how, with great gumption, a sharp knife, and a pissed off cow. Now full of blood, shit, and mud, one more thing to do, surely not fun. Time's wasting, can't be late, because with that same cow, it's time to castrate. Again, there are many men I hold in great regard, who humming their tasks to me so hard. I think of the great range rider. To me, he's the prototype, a true life fighter. Again, that's the poem, A Sharp Knife and a Pissed Off Cow. I encourage you to get outside, be one with nature, and that will help you relax and reflect, and sometimes, in some cases, forget about who you are because you're, you're just this little speck on uh, in Mother Earth. Uh, the next poem I have for you is a reflection of a trip uh, I took to see a great friend of mine in Garden City, South Carolina. We spent a few days fishing, and we were surf fishing on the beach in October and with my, uh, my friend Brett and just talking about life. And we had a prolonged silence, and he turns to me and says, You know what, Fox? I'm a marsh rat. And reflecting on that, I, I wrote this poem called living off water. Eyes open, sunrise near, jumping in boat in high gear, hopping out, toes in sand, gone digging for some clams. Not concerned with the rain coming, it's the tide. Tell me what's running. Just me, just me here, wife and two daughters, making a living, living off water. Sun is setting, Soup and mug, under a rock my line is hung. A step to the left and one to the right. Line is broken, in for the night. And for supper, no restaurants, just anything, whatever you want. Whitey and blue, welk and conch, or just crab on hot tongs. Head its pillow, soon I dream. Close to Honda, beer in reach. Kids to raise, mouths to feed. Without shoes, salt water I bleed. Just me here, wife and two daughters, make it a living, living off water. Again, that's living off water. It comes from the poem Marsh Rat from my book, Letter Kindling, Igniting, Inspiring, and Evoking the Fire Within. Lucky for me, a few short months ago, with help of the Nashville Song Service, that poem, Living Off Water, has been made into a song and very well done by the Nashville Song Service. Continuing with Falling in Love with Nature, I give you the poem now, 
Einstein of nature. Get educated today, not from just a book, but from nature itself. And it goes like this. I didn't get educated from any book. I got it from bait and a hook and a stand and a tree. And when I get hungry, it's not to a restaurant I go running. I catch clams with my feet. My dance floor is the sand, and the forest is my favorite band, and from the wind I get my rhythm. I look to nature to give me nurture. It gives me everything and anything to succeed. It's from the stars I read. Today, people, go out there. Be an Einstein of nature. Commit. Live off water. Appreciate sunlight. All of these things, do it to fall in love with nature and internally to get more healthy yourself. This next poem, it's called Bullfrog Pond. It's about a local park. And a few Novembers ago, on a really glorious November day, even though time was short and it was getting dark, I decided to go out and take a walk in this park because I kind of know my way around it. But um, unfortunately, the first couple of times that I visited this park in November, there was a sign that said, beware of black bear, and therefore the, the park was closed. But finally, on a decently Sunday, sunny, sunny afternoon, I was able to, uh, to get in, walk around, and I found myself at this place, this spot in this park called Bullfrog Pond, and I sat down and wrote this. Sitting here, Writing this song, on the surface, not much going on. Looking around in a writing fog over here at Bullfrog Pond. In the distance, geese bellow, a wholesome sight for this young fellow. An east wind moves the brush. Quiet now, ladies, time to hush. Twice I came here in the past. The park was closed and the gate was a cast. There was a sign. I stopped and I stared and said, beware people of black bear. Now I'm in, third time, it's a charm. Mom and cubs, I mean no harm. Enjoy this park and all of its beauty as I sit here on my booty. Sitting here, writing this song. On the surface, not much going on. Looking around in a writing fog over here at Bullfrog Pond. Again, that's the poem Bullfrog Pond from my book, Litter Kindling, igniting, inspiring, invoking the fire within. I'm hoping that these, these short poems help you now fall more in love with nature. That's the, the whole point today. Here in New Jersey, it's a, a balmy about 34 degrees, snow on the ground. I'm a school teacher, and, and fortunately for me, uh, I've been in all day. School has been, been canceled for the day, so I'm glad to be here with you. Next poem I have, it's called Green Thumb. It's about my, uh, my grandfather, Sonny Kilblock who, uh, among many things in his lifetime, was a farmer, and he really had a green thumb. Uh, he grew everything on his farm, uh, apples, blueberries, raspberries, corn, and he did it all uh, um, with just, just this amazing green thumb, and this is a reflection uh, of, of that, and just a uh, me saying thank you uh, to him. I depend on the harvest season. The living is good when my hands are bleeding. Trimming bushes and pruning trees. On my tractor, transporting feed. Here I am, a farmer's son, two strong hands, and one green thumb. On the ATV to the log splitter, bag bomb, ready for dinner. I grab a drink out to the stoop, my chicken scurry, invaded coop. Here I am, a farmer's son. I've got two strong hands and one green thumb. From sunrise to sunset to Mother Earth, I am in debt. Here I am, 
a farmer's son, I've got two strong hands and one green thumb. Again, that's the poem and song, Green Thumb, about my grandfather, Sonny Kilblock. Today, people, fall in love with nature. It's out there. It is just a few steps away. And sometimes all you need is just yourself. Sometimes going out there in your bare feet is the best thing. Uh, my mother, for years, watching all of my baseball games in high school, she never wore, uh, wore shoes. And that was probably a product of falling around my green thumb grandfather uh, around the farm when she was growing up. This next one is not totally about nature, but it's something you can be in to enjoy nature more. It may look like a piece of junk, uh, but to me and, and to my uh, one of my best friends, it was not. It was an old, beat-up pickup truck, truck called Mighty Max. It's just this red, uh, almost dilapidated truck on the outside, and it never went on the highway. Uh, my friend Kip just kept it for years and drove it, not even around town, just around the yard to, to do yard work. And unfortunately, a few short years ago, he, he had to give it up, but it, it, it lives on in, in this poem and song called Mighty Max. I, I hope you enjoy it. Sitting on the side of the road, rusty hitch just been towed. Keys barely fit into ignition, passenger seat, two-inch incision. Never passed state inspection, but you've got any man's affection. Gears that grind and plates that read, mine, mine, mine. Mighty Max, on the highway you've never been, but we have miles of backyard memories. Mighty Max. In the bed, tailgate out, looking ahead and reminiscing. You might cost a bus ticket, but you are worth a million bucks to me. Mighty Max, on the highway you've never been, but we have miles of backyard memories. Mighty Max. So before you make the final decision to give up that old rusty pickup truck, think about Mighty Max and think about the joy, the uninhibited joy that, can, that it can bring you when you are outside enjoying nature. Another great thing about nature, and I mentioned it before in the poem, Living Off Water, is being on the water and, and, and just sitting there fishing, hoping maybe to catch something, but just being out there itself is just therapeutic. And it, it's got to be that way for, for anybody. And a couple of years ago, you know, I'm driving home from work. I said, I'm going to write something today, whether I like it or not. Fortunately, I live close to, to a river. Walked out from my garage with, my, one of my, with a stool of mine and sat down and looked at it. I thought to myself, what do fish think at the bottom of this river and I came up with this poem called Fresh Fish Thoughts. And uh, I hope you all enjoy it. What do fish think at the bottom of this river? I think to myself, and it makes me shiver. Stories of brethren from their past, their track record must smoke them, gasp. A group of red drum taking a midweek cruise just for fun. But down came bait and a hook. It was little Johnny they took. And those kitties, their story, what a pity. A great life they were set. And then they met their match, a net. And then there were salmon. You bet this happened. Downstream, they swam and they dared. They ran into Mr. Brown Bear. What do fish think at the bottom of the river? I think to myself, and sometimes it just makes me shiver. Be one with nature. Take a few steps outside. 
can be therapeutic for yourself. Fall in love with it. Okay, from poems like Living Off Water, Bullfrog Pond, Sharp Knife, and a Pissed Off Cow. Hope you're enjoying it. This one is called Observe. One of the great things when you walk outside is you don't have to say much. Just looking around, it's worth a thousand words. And, and with that, I give you the poem, Observe. Observe, two eyes and one mouth. Observe, don't think out loud. Observe, you know what this story is about. Observe, there's so much we can learn. Observe, soon you will barrel the curve. Observe, verbal bondage has no place. Observe, this is not a race. Observe, the clicks in your pen. Observe, the chicks in the pen. Observe, leaves falling off the trees. Observe, look, hear, smell, touch, and see. Observe, the tantalizing sunset. Observe, much is far from over yet. Observe, the dock could be hollow. Observe, the water could be shallow. Observe, you own what you see. So observe your thoughts. Tell me. Again, that's the poem Observe, from my book, Letter Kindling, Igniting, Inspiring, and Evoking the Fire Within. Again, I'm Fox Byer, teacher, coach, poet, author, speaker. Fall in love with nature. It's just a few short steps away. And if you're close to a door, why not step out there now? And as you do that, I will give you the poem, Step. Step, your idol no more. Step, pick yourself up off the floor. Step, get up out of your seat. Step, you will not lie there in defeat. Step, in mind and body, a winning tranquility. Step, without movement, there is no possibility. Step, each pace equals a seed. Step, in the world's largest sequoia tree. Step, one by one, they will amass. Step, core-filled passes down victory path. And I know some days when we're outside trying to enjoy nature, it's tough. And you've had a rough night, you are not in the greatest of shape and we want to get somewhere else. And maybe we've, we're just, we've just found ourselves outside in adverse conditions and, we, and we've got to get back home. So uh, with that, I'll give you the poem, The Road to Success is Not Paved. Even if tough times last, tough people, they last longer. And as you go down that mogul-ridden path, let your faith grow stronger. If you fall off the horse, get up and get back on the saddle. Victory Highway, that's not smooth sailing, for that road is a constant uphill battle. Even if positive thoughts don't work, negative thoughts, they'll kill you. So keep your mind, your body, and your soul on high alert. You never know what height you'll take yourself to. So keep one hand on the wheel and one foot on the gas. These struggles you'll face, they are real. And you can tell them to kiss your ass. Let the path to victory not drive you insane because outside the road to success, it's never paved. Again, I'm Fox Byer, teacher, speaker, poet, author, and coach, hoping to get you to love more nature today. And I think even people that are sick, sometimes when they get outside, that can be very healing to them. Um, I know in the, the times that I've dealt with people who, who've been very sick, even cancer, they said some of the best medicine they've had uh, for them in their life, lives is getting outside. Um, and with that reflection of that, uh, I want to give you uh, the poem, Tough Beginnings to a Happy Life. 
The early was a day-to-day -day struggle. It went from bad to worse, and the pain doubled. Never far from imminent danger, from the tough and the unforgiving, I was no stranger. Closure to me seemed impossible, but toughness, I had that, and it was plentiful. So I turned my pain into inspiration, and every day I gave it a game face salutation. I said, hello, tough times. You were just a pit stop to a happy life, because what's victory highway without some struggle and strife? Fall in love with nature. Allow it to heal you. All you have to do is get up and move. It can even heal the greatest and most insidious of sicknesses, even cancer. My, my cousin Terry, and I, I believe that she beat it. And to me, beating it just means every single day living the life that you want to live, even with this insidious disease inside of you. And, and one of the ways you can do it is enjoying being outside. And, and, and the, the last poem I want to give you is a reflection of that. It's called Free of Disease. And you can free yourself of disease by just getting outside. And it goes like this. Last night, I lied in bed and looked to the sky. I'll tell you what I said or saw in my mind's eye. I saw a place sane in race and creed, a mighty fine place to be indeed. People not doing for themselves, but each other. That person right next to them, for sure their brother. These people for each other, they lived. One word on their mind, that word was give. It was a place free and void of things like bigotry. A mighty fine place to be indeed. Last night, I looked at the sky and saw a world free. Of disease. Again, my name is Fox Byer. I'm a teacher, speaker, author, poet, and coach, and I hope you've enjoyed today how we can again fall in love with nature. From my poems like Marsh Rat, Bullfrog Pond, Muddy Max, and Green Thumb, I want to make an offer to you all today for those who are listening and those who enjoyed uh, some of my poems. Again, the book's name is Letter Kindling, and if you email me off my website, and the website's name is foxbuyer.com, that's F-O-X-B-E-Y-E-R.com. If you enjoyed what you heard today, please shoot me an email. I'd be glad to give you, uh, send you a free copy of my book of poetry, and a lot of what is in there are, are poems about nature. If you feel like some of my words could help your uh, group or organization, please do the same. Email me off uh, of my website, foxbuyer.com. That's F-O-X-B-E-Y-E-R.com. And I'd be happy to help you in any way that I could. Again, I'm Fox Buyer, and I encourage you all to fall in love with nature. Talk to you all soon. Tanya, back to you. All right, everyone, if you have a comment or question for today's Google Box, push star nine, star nine will raise your hand in the system and you can ask them or give them a comment. Who's got that done for me? <laughs> All right, thank you for being on today. Tanya, thank you so much for this platform. It's, it's, it's just, it's great to talk to you and explore different ways where we can impact people. So thank you. Perfect. <laughs> you are muted. Alrighty, and I think this is the amazing Mr. Drew. Now then, is that you, Drew? Yeah, it is. Yay! Yep. So going from one amazingness to another amazingness.